Time for your VOR Republican. This is Ed. This is Mike. This is Terry. Terry, where do you work, man? What do you do? I work at Third Coast Comics. I'm the owner and operator of a comic shop here in uh, Chicago, Illinois, at 6234 North Broadway. Yeah. I'm also, and I didn't, I, you know, I didn't drop this before, but every so often I do bring this up because we were just talking about kind of how it is running a comic shop in a like in this diverse, changing, weird sort of environment that we have here, I'm the only African American comic book shop owner in the entire country. What? Wait a minute. What? What? Yeah. But remember, how I was saying earlier, brothers don't grow up wanting to own comic shops. Yeah. For wow. every job that you can think of in the comic book industry, the black person would do comic book retail is probably the last one somebody would think of. Because you know, we know I people that read them. Yeah. Yeah. Like. That's weird because you said that you said the thing is brothers don't own comic book shops, but growing up, I was under the impression it was something I was told because I noticed it, but I didn't. It didn't like come to the forefront of my mind. Is that often African American men you don't see them at the swimming pool, and often you don't see them on motorcycles. This was me growing up. Right. Like I didn't often see African American men on motorcycles or chilling at the you know the swimming pool. So and I can explain. I can, yeah. I, I can explain a few of these things. Motorcycles. I see plenty of brothers, brothers riding motorcycles. This now cool since thing. Queen Latifah, now the brothers. <laughs> <riding motorcycles. laughs> what did Queen Latifah do? For Queen motorcycles. Latifah. <laughs> bitch was in. Bitch was in. But she had motorcycles in all her videos back in the nineties. Roll on back, ladies first, baby. But, but now it's like it's Harley riders, right? It's Harley riders because Harleys are cool. Right, Harley's kind of transcend. It's like you know the Stratocaster or the Les Paul. Right, there's there's something that's always cool about that thing. But right. if you're gonna ride a Harley, you're gonna pay five grand for a bike, which is kind of half of an okay car. So you got to make that option. This is Chicago, right? You can only ride a motorcycle here three months out of the year. Right. Any other time, there's death outside waiting for you. Right. You wouldn't want to be trying to ride a motorcycle in this town outside of a certain three months. A right. month from now, we're done with motorcycles here. Right. Yeah. But the swimming pool thing is. If you think about sports, brothers grow up playing sports for competition, right? We don't play sports just for exercise. And swimming is this thing that we look at as that's just moving back and forth, right? Okay. No dude in a pool, I mean, even if you look great with your shirt off, no dude in the pool was ever like, if I swim this lap in six fucking seconds, that chick's going to be like, damn, he a badass swimmer. Uh, right? They they would concentrate instead on football or basketball or baseball or something else that just looked cooler that more of their friends could do and that the ladies would gravitate towards. Now there's this whole thing, there's a stereotype that black people can't swim. There's right. that that stereotype is so strong that when I was taking swimming lessons as an adult, um, to not drown because I figured I live near Lake Michigan and someday I might have to know how to swim. Right? Right. I swam as a kid, but I didn't swim for years. And when I, I was taking these lessons, I was having trouble kicking, you know, a, a steady kick from one side of the pool to the other, not even the length, just across, right? right? And I was practicing this with my wife in the pool. My wife's a great swimmer. And and one of the lifeguards, like a eh, like 17, 18-year-old kid, she's like, oh, it's okay that you're having trouble, you know, swimming. Everybody knows that black people have heavier feet. <laughs> and I was like... Finally, there's an answer to why. <laughs> I mean, I stood right up in the pool like, the fuck? And then she, she didn't just, like, the look on my face didn't seem to matter so much. She went on, she said, and you have oils in your skin that kind of, like, it affects your buoyancy in the water. And I was like, the Bitch, fuck is are getting we Russians? Of... You know what I'm saying? Like, what, is this a John Carter book? The fuck are we? <laughs> Our feet are different just because we're black? And I have oils in my skin that affect buoyancy. Where? Dude, that's, that's what we're wrong. That's... I was like, okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even, like, I was... Not pissed, but annoyed at the level of stupidity coming my way. Like unfiltered, unfiltered. Right. Not like, like, is this okay to say? It this was someone? said with this is level. This of, there was a level of conviction right. in her voice, like she was straight trying to help me. You know, your feet are because of your because of your terribly heavy black feet. Yes, it's gonna yes. be a little more difficult. So, what we've done. What you might want to do is shower off some of those oils. Right. 
<laughs> yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta make sure that I'm not bringing in my anti buoyancy body oil into the pool. But this is like a stereotype that apparently has persisted for years. Wow. Black people don't swim because they can't. They have heavy feet and some bullshit about oils in our skin. I think the every is. generation needs a Jimmy the Greek just to set oh, the record straight. Oh my God, Ed! I I have to tell you, like automatically in my head, I've got this mental picture. We've got to we've got to set this up and record it like visually. I can see young black man. It's like the YMCA. It's an indoor pool. There's like there's like a big sort of like TI training instructor sort of lifeguard sitting in his thing and he's got his hat on and a whistle and then young African American man just sort of cracker jack comes out of the out of the locker room and he goes around the corner and he's like, "Yo, Tyrone, make sure you shower off before you get in that water. I don't need right. you drowning on my watch with your heavy ass feet and your negro feet." Look at those feet. Look at them. <laughs> I can already tell, bro. Come on, man. You should put some flippers on or something. Help me help you. You know? Dude, you can put those little um those this little shit, water like, like 18. Like which meant that wherever this craziness came from, she got that shit recently. It wasn't like she was yeah. 60 saying it. Like she got it recently. Within the past, like what, four presidents? You right. know? She learned this somewhere. You know, and she was just breaking like she was dropping science. Not you science. need those water wing anklets. And I was right? like, like some more. I need wings on my ankles. He needs, he needs wings here and wings on his ankles. Right. I That's love it. it. And then he can finally swim. Black people have. I just kept feet. swimming. I was there, right, lady. We're good. Oh my god. Thank you for your help. Man, you know, quick aside. There used to be a. There was a, a radio personality here in Chicago, the eighties and nineties, who uh, his name was Kevin Matthews, and he had a segment. For a while, uh, it was called Ask a Brother, and anybody could call in. You keep it anonymous, right? But anybody could ask in, uh, call in, and ask his friend, who's literally his name is Tyrone. Uh, just ask him any question because there was obviously a need. Yep. Because of shit like this, and someone's got to set it straight. Yeah, listening to this, you're like, are you fucking kidding? Yep. And he didn't even need to set up ringer calls. I, I worked with a lady <laughs> once. I worked shit. with a lady once who was on a, who legit. She's from another country, and from her point of view, everything she knew about black people she saw on television, literally, <laughs> everything came from television. And one day she asked me, "Terry, do you sleep in a bed?" And I was like, "By choice, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how do you mean? Do I sleep in a bed? Like?" Right. I mean, like there's some days when I prefer a sleeping bag over a stack a stack of a stack of pillows. That's very comfortable. I was a young bachelor. I right. had all kinds of sleeping situations. You right. know? But what do you mean? Do I sleep in a bed? She's like, Well, you know, black people, do they prefer beds? And I was like, prefer beds to tables? To what, bitch? Trees? <laughs> what are we talking about now? <laughs> I don't mean, sleep in what? trees. What? Where are we going with this? It was legit a... She had a question. I was like, Yeah, I got a bed. Yeah, oh, sure. hell, dude. That's if I bit. were there, I would have made that a big fat racist <laughs> issue. No, I would have gone DC on her ass. Sometimes you can't. Like, you, you, when you know it's coming from a position of, it must have taken her years to ask me that. Well, she didn't just think of it. She's, oh, been my. That. she's been wondering that about every black person she's ever seen. And anybody that actually asks something like that is really asking like it's something that they've they've had with them yes and they're 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 not answering I trust they're not you because they're dicks they're yes really are genuinely I curious. trust you to possibly give me an answer to this thing that's been on my head so long I don't even think it's gonna be offensive right yeah. <laughs> you know like there you go that's privilege right there the thing that's about to come out of my mouth will sound weird but it won't possibly be offensive yeah. right yeah. hey Mike I heard uh you know People only live in, or you know, they live in Florida because Disney's there. Is this true? Exactly. No. Yes. You know, I, I got to tell you, a dude walking up to you and be like, "Hey, hey, white guy, so right? How big is your dick? You and know what I mean? Like it's oh, that I'm thick. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that it's thick. Accepted. It's know? expected. I have a buddy. His name is Quinn. For me. Yeah. No, I can't. Um. <laughs> Um, I have a buddy, his name is Quentin. He's a young kid, about 22, 23 years old. Met him in school, and he actually came to stay with us for a while, for about a week, in between classes and dormitory situations. So I went to pick him up at his place that he was living with with his sister, temporarily. And he's like, hey man, do you mind stopping at the Circle K for a little while? He's African American man. Young man. And I'm like, sure, Bubba. So I take him over, and we're getting some sodas. It's hot. It's Florida. 
And I will be goddamned if he doesn't go direct and pick up a pack of chicken and biscuits crackers because they're good. And then he goes straight over and buys one of those big ass oil can of the Arizona sweet tea, but it's watermelon sweet tea. And I was like, Quentin, hell no. Hell <laughs> what no. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm like, the hell? is that a joke? Why not pick up some watermelon Jolly Ranchers while you're at it and maybe some Colt 45? They even still make that. Anyway, he's like, dude, he's like, this is the deal. Sometimes the stereotypes are stereotypes because they're true. These bitches just taste great together. <laughs> like that. And he's like, and this, is, and this is what I call lunch. And I was like, you know, dude, you are right. It is, no, that is right. You know I, can, I, mean? I can one up that. I can one up that being in Orlando and going to Publix. I'm at the checkout. And I want, I know that's true about the stereotypes, but you know what? I want everybody to beat the stereotypes. Sure. You know, right. when, when someone cuts me off, like they don't really understand what driving's about, like they're in a sleeping daze, and I, I pull up next to them because everybody wants to see who that jerk is and what they look like, and I find out it's an Asian person, and it's like, no, you have to do better. Yes. You have to do better. Yes. So yeah. I'm, I'm in line at, at, uh, at, at, at Publix, and there's a woman behind me, and, and you know, she's, she's a black mom, she's got two kids, and they're screaming, and they're just like, just screaming and screaming. And she's yelling back at them, and you're just trying to be cool. And like, well, let's just get out of here. So I got on a couple of things, and I to check out. And you know, you look at the kids, you give the face like, kids are so cute, but that's not what you're thinking. Right. They're mm -hmm. so cute. Oh, you're just a mom, just trying to make it. Sure. You know? And you can't help but look at this cart that's now behind you, and notice that there are two watermelons. Yep. Two boxes of fried chicken and two two-liter bottles of grape soda. I'm like, this can't be true. This can't this, be So here's the truth. <laughs> me, and, me and some of my black nerd friends talk about this shit all the time, right? And here's the thing about stereotypes. You don't want to live the stereotype, but there are right. some facts of life that shouldn't be involved in the stereotype, and they just kind of are. Like right. this thing with chicken, right? As it happens... Fried chicken is just fucking delicious, and it ain't never done nothing to nobody. So why is fried chicken getting maligned in some racial bullshit, right? Right, right. What it is, you know? Like, it is taking, I am I am over 40 years old. It's taking a lot of fucking time to be able to go in a restaurant and be like, oh, chicken, man, I had a chicken in that, you know? Because right. for so many years, it was like, mm, no. Right. I still can't fuck with watermelon in the public. Like, no. Just, yeah. No, man, you got to cube them shits, you know what I mean? Like, he's got a big little plastic tray with the honeydew and a cantaloupe and shit. If it's in a fruit cup, watermelon's all good. I'm from the Mountain City of the other day, damn, <laughs> yo, it's summer. Yeah, man, it's watermelon time. And I looked at her and I was like, nah. Oh, <laughs> I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> See that big rind on like, the forest? Grapes. Come on. I, I'm about grapes. Pineapple. I'm all with pineapple. But I still can't fuck with watermelon just because watermelon's got a bad fucking name now. You know? It watermelon means it, guilt by association. It needs to be hanging out with its acceptable friends of, of pineapple and, and honeydew melon and, and pears or some shit. Yeah. Peaches you know, and nectar. You know, fuck watermelon otherwise, you know? I already see the advertisement banner for this show. It's like, it's a big wedge with our faces as the, um, as the seeds. Seeds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, well, you know what? We did get a, we actually did get a Republican this week. So oh, let's see. Uh, cheers. At least you listen to that. And, uh, but first we're going to listen to this. <gasps> Short and sweet. Cool. So the uh, okay, we only have one call this week. That's cool. We love it. Bring more. Keep calling. Old shows, new shows. Got a bone to pick? What ifs? We want to hear about it. Uh, so this week we got a call from our uh, returning fan, Voron Padawan Eagle. I would have. I was about to guess Padawan Eagle. <laughs> it's it's awesome. I'm glad she's back. Hi guys, drunk people again. Oh, no. um, I don't know. I guess this is becoming a weekly thing. I get drunk, go on walks, and make voicemails. That's like I've lost forty something pounds. So the walks aren't gonna stop, and I'm 23, Yay. so I guess the drinking's probably not gonna stop. I guess 
It's got these things and turns fecal mail. Anyway, so, um, what the fuck was I going to say? Yeah, so I've been listening to some of the old cast, and it's like, dude, the fuck out with an idiot. Man, fuck kids. Fuck being kids. Fuck this shit. Um, so I've probably taken up enough of your time, and I'm gonna go away now. Tiggle out, bitches. <laughs> 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 She's wow. gone from loving our opinions now to peagle out bitches. Peagle out bitches. Peagle out. Bitches. Was there a question? Was there a question in there? No, there's no question. Um, there was statements being made. Yes. And I think I'm that person's fan for life now. Right. There, there was. I didn't understand peagle out. I thought I heard kegel out. Oh, we support kegels. Which, which I thought. Paddle One Eagle is up in that game to a whole other level here. There like, I've called drunkenly. I got shit to do right now. Trying to concentrate. I'll talk to you later. Like that's what I here. thought I heard. I've been doing this for one hour. I got another hour left. I better call VR. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Eagle out. All right, I got it. All right. Yeah. Uh, got it. There you go. Yeah. She she started calling in the early days of our show when she was uh she's in her Kid. teens. And um, what's that? No, I said she was a kid. Oh, yep. And um, so she was a fan of the show, big Star Wars fan. Uh, so she would call in and um, just usually promote EU, which we weren't okay. as into. So she pleaded her case. So we've kind of watched her grow over the years. She'd come in and dip out, come in and dip out. Um, her voice sounds very familiar to me. Interesting. I, I, I thought this was someone that I actually did know in real life, but okay. I don't think it's the person I think it is. Okay. Um, she's really I still think she's pretty great. Michigan. Now she lives in Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so she was gone for a long time. Now she's back and um, drunk, drunk dialing us. Um, so. Padawan Eagle, if you're listening, I want to know if you've ever been or have heard of a place in Kentucky called Rabbit Hatch. The mayor may still be a dog. One of the best parties I've ever been to was in Rabbit Hatch, Kentucky. I met the mayor. Was it an election party? No, it was like just some kind of summer thing they were doing. Rabbit Hatch is up on a mountain just off the Ohio River by about 20 minutes outside of Cincinnati. So it's on like the Newport side of the... Kentucky, but I don't know. Like Kentucky's a big state, so whenever I'm talking about Ohio or Kentucky, I'm talking about the shit I know, which is just from visits once a year, right. twice a year, right? Like people are like, "Man, no, nah, motherfucker, Kentucky's a huge state." I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> if if Padawan Eagle knows of Rabbit Hatch, that'd be fucking awesome, because one of the best play- parties I've ever been was weird as shit. Sounds weird. Yeah. It was like you Perfectly. know, like, buddy of mine's a drummer, and this kind of like you know ragtime sort of roots thing. And Roots Jazz thing, and they, they sort of, they had a gig in the general store. And this drum set was set up back where the toilet paper was. Nice. Not like at a stage, they were just in an aisle <laughs> playing. <laughs> Pretty great. I think that it would be neat to have a, a bit of a conversation with Padawan Eagle um, with regards to her evolution in terms of Star Wars fandom. True. It would be cool to see where she's at. It would be nice to see how it matured for her. And matured, you know, even if it matured into oblivion, mm. you know, just see where it went. That would be interesting. She's a sweet kid. Very, very smart young lady. and yeah. Outstanding person. And based on this recent call, I would say, you know, number one, um, looking back, you know, you can't really say fuck kids because we all go through it. We will have awkward phases. And every situation in your life, even the bad ones, are learning experiences if you choose to look at it as such. So, what didn't you like? You know, you can grow from that. Don't do that anymore. Right. Uh, what did you like? Focus on that. Be more of that. If that's what made you happy, keep doing that. Um, sure. Walking and losing weight, I'm really happy for you. You know, I think that's wonderful. Uh, you're doing it drunk. That's some personal growth shit. Right? Be careful. That's personal growth. Yeah. It's growth and loss. That's personal growth with fun. Yeah, uh, and exactly. just last week, Jamie Bach revealed to us that he and his buddy do uh, what the, the, the stroll and bowl, where they would just walk around their city and uh, bring you know, a little, little bit of weed with them. Oh, I see. All right. And they just walk, sometimes a long time. I have, been known, <laughs> I have been known to, to, to have a few Jamesons and then go to my Zumba class. There you go. Really? Yeah, yeah man. Oh my God! Sometimes it's one of those days. You know, I think you, I think you, you're going to the gym. You're going to the gym, but you need to de-stress a little bit before you get there. You know, <laughs> so you're happy to see everybody. It's you know, it's, have a few drinks. I think Ed had a once had a Whopper and then then did hot yoga. 
Uh, that sounds like it would end in horrible things. I. Oh wait, yeah, that's. I think that's true. Okay. <laughs> that's I'm true. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I, I seem to remember a situation where Ed ate and then went to hot yoga and threw up immediately. I didn't throw up, but because I've been doing I've been doing the big room and I was like, you yeah. know, I got it. I'm a master. I, I own it. I love it. Sure. So I'm running and doing yoga and it's awesome. And um, I had never eaten beforehand because you you really should. I, I don't like, eat before is, my yoga class. In fact, I've learned yeah. not to even drink much before my yoga class. Right. I've, right. I've ridden my bike from work to the gym, got myself a Gatorade, slammed the Gatorade, just shotgun it because it's been hot out, gone to my yoga class and been like, no inversions. What the hell? No. Because you just think, oh, liquids. They'll just go through the body and I'll be all cool and shit. No, no, no. It sits for a while, right about here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's just when somebody wants to go full wheel with some bullshit. Ooh. And that's exactly <laughs> what happened. I, I had a late lunch. I skipped lunch. But I would, yeah, totally. <laughs> Got a burger. And I'm like, all right, I'll have this about 2 o'clock, 2, maybe 3 o'clock. And the class isn't until 6. That's a lot of time for it to like do its thing and absorb. Maybe I'll have a nice drop towards the end of the day, and then I go in, I'll be empty, but I won't be starving, because when I'm starving, yeah. I'm an asshole, people. I'm an asshole. But it didn't matter, because it was still in my belly. So I'm doing everything that I'm used to doing, and just like sweating, and breathing heavy, and sweating, and in some position, I'm like, and I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like pass out, or throw up, or both, and I'm dizzy, and this is awful, and I had to like lay down. I'm like, just why? Why? I should be good. And I stand up again. I'm like, now the next hard thing. Yep. This is awful. And I lay down again. I'm like, this is, I was really going to throw up. And it would have been like a violent projectile type, as intense as Beaker is. That would have been the yep. um, response. So don't eat. Don't do it. We, we just allowed this show to go to hell. This is called Off the Rails. This is but Off that's the Rails. Not as Off the Rails as last week. Why you have an editor. Right. <laughs> Good luck, Carl. Welcome back. Um, but yeah, hey, uh, you want some more VOR? You want to see On the Rails? You want to see last week's show? Really off the rails? Rails off the rails when we talk about Ghostbusters. Um, that was that was that was crazy. That was fucking <laughs> apeshit crazy. But we love it. We love Jamie and we love Matt for doing that. Um, yeah, get more. Get more VOR at VORradio.com. Uh, we love to hear from you. Like we said, links to feedback on our page, and also to Facebook. We're there all week, posting, talking, hashing it out. Good arguments, a lot of love. Um, and also, uh, hey, uh, if you have a YouTube account, please subscribe to us. We'd love to hit 100 subscribers. That's our magic number. Uh, that will come back and do really well for the show. Um, yeah, on YouTube, watching now, please leave a comment. The con conversation is always happening. and. Um, that's it. So next week, I think we should have Carl back, and uh, hopefully Mike will be here, and hopefully I'll be here, and Terry will be gone. We can talk about him. And... It's yeah. fine. We can dish on Terry. You know to find me. That's right. I know to find you. Yeah. Yeah. We live uncomfortably close to each other. <laughs> we just go over and start <laughs> shit in the street. <laughs> right. <for> that. <laughs> like cool. a scene from The Warriors. Just like The Warriors. All right, um, and we'll post links to Third Coast Comics uh, probably on the video and also on the page. Right, cool. Anything else, Mike? No, I'm just uh, thankful to have been on the show with you guys today and to have been able to meet Terry and hear about his show, his um, store, and his thoughts on the whole Marvel universe of movies and why they rock. Yeah. Why they That's appeal true. to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> like they should if they want to make money. I mean, they kind of have to. Right, there you go. Yeah. And I think we'll have to have you on for a, for a, for a Joss Whedon. All right. Super week. Good. Not enough hours in the day. Yeah, I can't wait for this. All right, guys. Um, so it's Kate. We'll be back next week. And until then, may the force be with that ass! That oh, ass! <gasps> Field explosion! <laughs> you slow-moing us? <laughs> <laughs> Good, man.